front of you, there isn't really much more that he like like that he that he would want to bring in in this matchup. Right, and it, and it's even like even if you just want to have uh, cantrips in your sideboard to like get your dead cards out, if there's a, if you want just like a card you can always bring in. Thought Scour actually seems pretty nice for um, Beck because he has Trading Post and Buried Ruin, so it's just like another way of getting kind of your graveyard juice. Sure. It's like uh, Hume is going to take a mulligan. You think one one side one side is more favored than the other in this particular matchup? You know, I'd much rather you want to be on. I'd rather much be on like Beck's side because his deck is just much more enginey and can go over the top of, okay. of Hume's deck. Hume's deck feels like it has the potential just for like draws that don't go anywhere. Most of his card advantage is contextual, like Lingering Souls and Day of Judgment and Black Zenith and all these kind of cards. Our card advantage only if like your opponent is like kind of willing to cooperate, if that makes sense. Sure. Whereas the stuff that Beck's deck is doing like kind of isn't predicated on his opponent. And now it uh, looks like Hume's on five cards. But Not I'm usually very I'm usually very suspicious of. Um, like control decks that don't really have card advantage. Now, obviously, a lot of what Hume's doing against creature decks is insane. Like, he has a bunch of rats, can, uh, like life gain, spot removal, threats that are very hard to deal with, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But in this kind of matchup, his cards just, like, don't necessarily operate correctly. Like, his control elements don't work. Sure. And, you know, like like, like you said, because he, he's a control deck that doesn't have any card drawing or card manipulation, as we're going to see exactly what's in his hand. It's definitely two lands and a Staff in them. I can't see what the... It's Plains, Ghost Quarter, Staff in them, and then a fourth card I cannot see. I mean, it looks kind of like Lingering Souls to me. I'm not 100% positive, however. It's not a horrible four card hand, a five card hand, rather, if it's Lingering Souls. Uh, it actually looks like it's a land now. Okay. But, you know, as, as you said, because he doesn't have any card manipulation or anything of that nature, you know, as good as, let's say, a card like... Um, Divine Offering is in this matchup against Josh. Yeah. He has no way to find it. Right. He has to hope that he draws it. Yeah. And then he draws it at like the right time for it to be good. Yeah. And there's a summoning. One of the many engine cards yeah. in Josh Beck's deck. And we see a Doomblade uh, in Michael's hand. I think we just drew a Lich. Grand Architect. Solemn. Solemn. So now, yeah, the engines are turning online very quickly here. Yep. We will likely see a Doomblade on that Grand Architect, but he is getting off to a quick advantage. And away it goes. Yeah, and this is why, like, most control decks are blue-based with at least, like, Ponders and those kind of cards to for selection purposes. Decks like Humes kind of only work if you know the metagame is in a very particular spot and like all the all the decks are like playing into Day of Judgment Terminus, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Because then when you run into other control decks, it's like, well, you don't have nearly enough aggression to steal the game early, nor do you have any late game inevitability because they're like finding their correct cards, hitting the appropriate number of land drops, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, while you are way more likely to have, uh, like your draws way more likely to fumble in some way. I mean, what you guys have seen here, um, Michael cast a Lingering Souls, Josh attacked with his 1 1 Psalm Simulacrum, and Michael has chosen to chump block, uh, well, not even chump block, but trade, um, which is going to net Josh a card off the Psalm Simulacrum, Worm Coil Engine in main phase two, plus a turn, plus passing the turn back to Michael. And now Michael is going to be flashing back his Lingering Souls, so just want to yep. keep you up the pace on the action. So Worm Coil down to a 5-5, five five. this is a summoning, and that's a Staff of Nim, also totally, totally awesome here. That's an attack for 5. Pretty good against the Lingering Souls deck. Not bad at all against the Lingering Souls deck, and I mean, a, a, another card a turn can't hurt either. Right. But we'll see a Haven Ghoul Lich, okay. Get this back, cast Solemn, get another land. We're going crazy. Just another engine within engines. Yes, yeah, so his deck is all engines. It's very interesting. Yeah. The engines also work well together. Too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All the all these things play well with one another. So Josh is. Uh, it appears that we are on turn two of extra time. And. Ooh. 
<laughs> we might be in turn. We might be in store. Excuse me for a draw then. Yeah, it looks looks very likely. Oh, that terminus. That terminus just turned everything around. Yep. He might have had some chance of, of punking him out here in, in turns, but yeah, not with with, with terminus resolving it. I mean, sub, as we're on turn, I believe it's I believe it's turn two. Yes. I think we're on turn four now. Okay. The body language from the way that Josh Bassett turned makes it makes me feel like it's going to be a draw. Yeah, it, it was one of those like, yeah, I've got you, but I don't have enough time. Yeah. Like, I would definitely win because like my deck is just set up to beat your kind of deck, but yep. I don't have enough time to actually do it. Staff of Nim seems like pretty custom suited for building decks like uh, the one that Hume has. Because it allows you to play a lot of mana and actually does give you a hard advantage source. So yeah, we had a, a, a draw there. It looked, looked like it was going well for Beck, although the fact that Hume had uh, staff in his hand meant that like he actually might have been able to keep up. Yeah, yeah.